All right, this is the second day of verifying trig identities. These are the five steps, um, helpful ways to verify identities. You don't need to write them down again, they're already in your notes. Okay, so we're gonna start off by showing you what happens when you multiply an example. So we have one, uh, one parenthesis squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and foil that out. What I'm hoping is I will get to the right hand side. So I'm going to expand this as the sine of x plus the cosine of x times the sine of x plus the cosine of x. So I'm going to foil first, outside, inside, last. So first would give me sine squared of x. Outside would give me the sine of x times the cosine of x. Inside would give me the sine of x cosine of x. Last would give me cosine squared of x. Alright, we're going to go ahead and combine like terms. So we have some like terms right here. So that becomes 2 sine of x cosine of x. I'm also going to regroup. I'm going to take this sine squared of x and this cosine squared of x and put them next to each other. So we have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. All right. Again, we're trying to prove the right-hand side. We're trying to prove this piece of the identity. There is an identity called the Pythagorean identity, very popular, that says the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals 1. So I can replace this whole thing with 1. And then I'm left with also 2 sine of x cosine of x. So let's head up to the top. Did we get this blue piece? Yes, we did. So we'll go ahead and write it down. We have now verified that this is an identity. They equal each other. All right, here's the second one. Now the last problem we went and multiplied, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to factor. So the number one rule to factor is take out the GCF. So there is a GCF on this left-hand side of the equation. I'm going to take out the GCF of the cosine of x. So what I'm left with then is 1 minus the sine squared of x. <clears throat> All right, so now what I have left is another Pythagorean identity right here. This is a Pythagorean identity that can be replaced with the cosine squared of x. Check your sheets to see if you hold it true. And then we have this blue cosine of x. All right, now we have a cosine of x times cosine squared of x. Think of that as x times x times x. We get x cubed. Same thing happens when you have a cosine of x times cosine squared of x. This reduces to cosine cubed of x. So have we verified this? Yes, we have. So let's go ahead and bring this down. That the cosine cubed of x equals the cosine cubed of x. Here's our third example. We have the tangent to the fourth of x. Um, definitely this is the more difficult side of the equation, so we'll start there. And we're going to do some factoring. So we're going to take out the GCF of tangent squared of x. What we're left with when we take out the GCF is we're left with the secant squared of x minus 1. Now we look inside the parentheses. This piece right here is a Pythagorean identity with the tangent squared of x. Then we still have this other tangent squared of x. So we're going to multiply tangent squared of x times tangent squared of x. So think about that as x squared times x squared, you get x to the fourth. So tangent squared of x times tangent squared of x is tangent to the fourth of x. All right, let's head up to the top of the original equation. The original equation on the left-hand side was the tangent to the fourth of x. That's what we wanted. So we head down to here. Tangent to the fourth power of x. We've now verified that these are truly identities are equal to each other. <clears throat> 